Hello and welcome to my Lightboard session. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the types of services provided by the cloud providers. And uh, when we talk about cloud providers, the three main cloud providers that I could think of are AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, and Google Compute Engine or Google, Google's platform, GCP that is, right? Now talking about uh, the cloud providers, when you go to or when you subscribe to one of the cloud providers and log into their console and just look at the products and the offerings that they have, the list is simply overwhelming. There are like hundreds of services in certain cases and uh, that can re really get confusing and over overwhelming at the same time. Even though you have different services for different applications, different type of uh, workloads, uh, different kind of infrastructure that you, you may want to manage, there are certain services which are the major or the primary services uh, that you should definitely know about. And I'm only going to focus about those particular services, starting with the first one being the compute services. Now, if you go to any cloud provider, even a smaller one, uh, you will definitely be able to create certain virtual machines or cloud servers or you know droplets, instances, uh, whatever you may want to call it. And that gives you an ability to provision a unit of compute uh, similar to running a virtual machine locally, or in certain cases, you can also get, uh, avail a dedicated server for yourself. Um, that is the unit of compute basically that you can avail. Today you can also provision, uh, a unit of compute can also be a container in addition to the virtual machine that the cloud typically started with. And that is the primary service which each of the cloud provider started with. And that's, the sum, that's something you should definitely know about in depth, in details, and you should be able to operate being a DevOps or a SRE. Personal. The second type of service, uh, let's say you have set up the web servers or your front end applications and you're running your applications there, but you also may need databases to be run. Right? And uh, when you talk about databases, uh, a lot of cloud providers have this managed database engines. And when you talk about databases, it could either be a SQL relational databases, or it could be a NoSQL databases where you create a cluster of uh, DB and connect them together, and you should be able to scale it horizontally as well. And the good thing about the managed service from the cloud providers is you do not have to install, configure, maintain, backup, manage, you know, do a disaster recovery for your database. It's a completely managed application for you. All you have to do is take your data, load it to the service, and you off you go. You're ready to get started, and you can connect it from your compute to the database, and you are online with your application, essentially. The third storage with compute and database, uh, it goes together, and um, that is about the storage, basically. Again, the storage can fall under at least two categories. One of that is uh, object-based storage. Second is a block storage. Block storage is like provisioning your disks. The disks that go into your computer, the hard drives, SSDs today, uh, that can fall under the block storage here. The second type of storage is an object storage where you don't use it and attach it to a compute unit, unlike the block storage. Block storage are the disks that you can attach to, you know, uh, to the compute servers here. But object storage is something that you store as in just files or objects, and then you can connect to that and retrieve it um, you know, upload and retrieve the files using API calls programmatically or using the HTTP URLs and store so on and so forth. So the storage is an important aspect because when you want to persist the data, you are going to need a storage and you would use either of these, these here. Uh, another important and useful thing um, is the network services. Now when you talk about network services, this is important to set up a parameter. We are talking about public cloud platforms. So when you are talking about public cloud platforms, you will be sharing that infrastructure with uh, many other organizations and uh, their own, right? It's a multi-tenant environment. So how do you secure your infrastructure 
you know, mm -hmm. maybe your compute units, your databases, your, you know, other services that you, or storage maybe, and so on, is by setting up a perimeter here. And this gives you your own virtual private cloud or a virtual environment uh, secured with this perimeter and in case of let's say AWS this is called as a virtual private cloud and uh, what you get with this is ability to define your network configurations ability to create a firewall at uh, the you know at the network level is called as network ACLs uh, ability to divide this network into subnetworks subnets ability to provide your own uh, IP addresses and schemes, ability to keep certain areas of infrastructures as private, uh, ability to set up the security related features based on that. So a virtual private cloud, a virtual network services are essential in today's multi-tenant environment especially from the security and customization point of view. So uh, these are some of the most important ones. And then there are many other services that you would see on the cloud platform. Let's say you want to deploy your applications, you typically have a way to set up your continuous integration and delivery uh, in an automated managed way on most of these cloud platform. There are DevOps services, there are you know um, management services, there are uh, services which help you control the users and their roles. So generally the user management services are important auxiliary services that you would end up using. Uh, you know, services such as IAM, identity and access management is an important aspect. Uh, when you start using the cloud in an organization where you have a lot of users and you'll have to define who has access to what and their authorizations, right? So basically, all of that can be managed using tools like IAM. Apart from that, there are many other tools which are specific to the kind of application that you would deploy. Uh, an example of that could be, let's say you're running some analytics uh, programs or you want to uh, set up big data infrastructure. You have managed, um, you know, Elastic MapReduce and services like that. Uh, if you want to create mobile applications and deploy it on cloud, you have all the components which are needed to run a mobile applications backend, including the compute itself. Plus uh, you have services like push notifications. You have services which give you analytics for your mobile applications uh, you obviously have services uh, apart from these uh, the routing the DNS and uh, other services which are needed uh, you have email services uh, you have push notification services to send the push notifications to your mobile application customers so you know you have that's just one example of a domain specific service so the major cloud services if you look at it are the compute storage databases networking, uh, identity and access management, and then you have many application platform and uh, the kind of app, you know, the infrastructure that you need. Uh, based on that, you can pick the domain specific services. And the objective of this lesson was just describe some of the major services.